Hello, Roadrunners, and welcome back to this week's episode of Real Talk. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about and giving you guys information, current news on the current presidential election to see who is going to be elected as the next president of the United States. Of course, the race is between presidential nom nominee from the Democratic side, Joe Biden, and Donald Trump from the Republican side. At the current moment, we see, according to Associated Press, we have 264 electoral college votes for Joe Biden, and we have 214 electoral college votes for Donald Trump, the current uh, president, of course. And of course, the big number, the magic number we're looking for to see who will get elected as the next president is 270 electoral college votes. The one issue though, I know we talked about it, John, in a previous episode, is the issue with mail-in voting. We talked in a, a few weeks ago, we talked about how mail-in voting can potentially affect the count and it could potentially delay the result of the presidential election and figuring out who's going to be the next president of the United States. And the way things have been going already a few days later, that's still the issue. We're still counting. Um, can you give us an update on what states we're looking at and uh, how, how many electoral college votes we're looking at here and just the potential, what, what might happen in the future with these votes that we're still waiting on? Well, as of right now, we're waiting on five states. We're waiting for Nevada, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, and Alaska. Nevada, we're holding on Nevada. As of right now, Nevada, uh, Biden is currently winning Nevada. If he gets those six points, he's going to reach 270 without, like, you know, like, for sure. Uh, Pennsylvania, he's, um, tw it's 20 points right there. North Carolina, 15 points. Georgia, 16 points. Trump is currently winning Georgia. However, Biden just brought that um, lead down to only 3,500 votes. So if uh, Biden ends up winning Georgia, he's, that, that's like a done deal right there. He wins the state. He becomes president. Alaska is only three. Uh, um, it's only three points right there. Uh, but you know about the mailing voting. You know we talked about it last episode, and really I don't know if you saw, but uh, uh, I think the show's uh, late night with Jimmy Fallon. Uh, he actually had Bernie Sanders um, as a special guest as as he as he was talking about it, and Bernie Sanders was actually explaining it, and he could have not predicted it any better. It's basically what we're seeing right now. Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders, on a night of the uh, of election day, he Tuesday basically night. called it out. He's he said he told Jimmy like that. Well, what you need to understand is like especially for Michigan and Wisconsin where Trump was winning on November third. He basically told Jimmy like you know Trump's going to assume like you know hey like you know I'm winning these states. You know he's he was winning Nevada at the time. And, you know, he, you know, he was just assuming like, you know, hey, I'm going to win, done deal. Then the next vote, like, you know, the next day, you know, all these mail-in vote, uh, votes were coming in. All these states are counting in the votes. And then next thing you know, Wisconsin and Michigan, they flip. It's blue now. Uh, Joe Biden wins those two states. And now it's like the tables have turned. So as of right now, Nevada on November 3rd, it was a, it was a red state, but, you know, uh, next day, November fourth, they turned. Uh, it was just turned into a, a blue state. A Demo yeah, Democratic. Yeah, state. yeah. So. To to further talk about that too, Donald Trump has been making remarks, a few uh, comments, on the electoral college system and specifically that aspect of mail-in voting. Um, Lorenzo, can you give us a little bit of information on what he said about specifically the mail-in voting and what should be done about that situation? Well, the, the problem is Donald Trump, he's never liked mail-in voting, first of all. He said a while back that none of his supporters should do mail-in voting and go vote when they're supposed to vote on Election Day. And now he's kind of, now it's kind of, it came back and bit him in the because, you know, he's losing. He has a good chance of losing right now, and it's because of those votes. It's because all the Democrats went out and voted because Democrats more likely to go and do mail-in voting and Republicans, 
as we, we could see at Trump rallies, they're all, they're all out there, no masks. So they ain't going to worry about voting in public, you know? Mm -hmm. So now it's kind of hurting them right there, you know? Yeah, and with that being said, um, I know specifically uh, from information these past few days, Trump has actually started to have a legal battle with some of these specific states to make sure they stop counting the votes. Um, I believe we've seen that in, we've seen that in Pennsylvania. Um, can any of you guys give me information on some of the other states that he's pretty much gone with that same idea, uh, pretty much going to a legal battle to try to stop the, stop the count? Well, earlier today, ABC7 actually uh, released an article and they just uh, posted that a federal judge denies uh, uh, denies a bid by Trump campaign to stop vote count. Which uh, which actually failed. It didn't go through. And obviously, like you know, um, it, it should not be acceptable because you know these uh, you can't take away an American's right to vote. You know that's their right. You know this is their country as well. It's every voice counts. And what Trump is doing is not like you know it's it shouldn't be acceptable. You cannot like uh, you well yeah you can't force this is or you, you can't force anybody to stop counting your vote. You know, it's everybody's vote. It's everybody's voice. You know, this is everybody's, uh, every American's country, you know, so. Uh, that's yeah. Right. Go ahead. Um, one thing I was going to say is something that's kind of interesting. In Arizona, Trump supporters in Arizona are flocking to, you know, the election polling places. And they're, they're saying, hey, count every vote, count every vote, because he has a better chance of winning there. But in Pennsylvania, they want him to stop counting the votes because you know biden's he's catching up you know yeah so we'll, so you kind of see what i'm saying there it's a little hypocritical yeah the trends definitely like like you had mentioned a lot more democrats are going out there and they actually implemented the mail-in voting uh, option but specifically this option came into place because of the current situation of covid19 virus and because of that, uh, it's actually turned out that more Democrats are voting in that mail-in voting option. And because of that, we've seen a lot of these states that were that were Republican, that were red, that were a red state on election day on Tuesday night. They're turning into blue states a few days after. Um, what are some of your guys' expectations moving forward in uh at least how the pattern is going on so far. What do you expect to happen? Who do you think might end up winning the 270 votes for the Electoral College and potentially being the next president? What, 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 what do you guys see potentially occurring in the future? Well, as I mentioned earlier today, Biden just, uh, while well, Donald Trump is currently winning over Biden in the state of Georgia by 3,500 votes. That wasn't the case earlier today. Earlier today, uh, Trump had a 2% lead over Biden. And as throughout the day went, uh, or the day went by, that 2% went to basically to point, to point of a percentage. So it went to 0.9%, to 0.5%, to 0.3%. And now it's it's pretty much even right now. They're both at, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's at 49.5%. They're both uh, even right there. And as I mentioned, Biden is only 3,000 uh, points away uh, for the state of Georgia. It, this is the, also the same state, as I mentioned, where, uh, you know, Philadelphia, Philadelphia is a big city in Georgia. And, you know, uh, the federal judge denies for Trump, uh, for for the Trump campaign to stop uh, counting the vote. If, so in Pennsylvania, correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, my, yeah, my bad. But... If you look, if you look at the electoral votes, as uh -huh. I mentioned before, Pennsylvania is twenty, and Georgia is sixteen. So if Nevada, we you know we would assume that they would have called it by now, but you know two days went by and yet uh, they're still counting the, all these counting votes. Words. Yeah, but in Georgia, uh, if for whatever reason you know Biden ends up winning Georgia, those sixteen points, like you know he's going to surpass two seventy if. If uh, Biden gets Nevada, it you know he's gonna get 270 even. You know, am I, like I can see it for two ways. If somehow Donald Trump ends up winning the four of the five states that need to uh, the four that are still being counted, if he wins 
Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, and Alaska, and Biden only gets Nevada, then obviously Biden's still going to win. If Biden uh, gets Nevada and Georgia, he's, you know, for sure president. Donald Trump will have to win Nevada. And, well, basically he will have to win every other state right now, which isn't really looking at, like, it's not going his way at the moment. But, you know, at the moment, Biden looks like he's in control of the league right now. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about uh, the situation, like we mentioned, with him wanting to stop the count. Uh, we saw a very close presidential election back in 2000 between Gore and Bush. And with that one, there were votes that were recounted, of course. Uh, in this presidential election, that's not technically the case because votes aren't being recounted. But votes are still being counted from the mail-in voting aspect that we talked about earlier. Do you guys think there's some sort of situation in case Biden does win that Trump may refuse to essentially give up the, the spot or might ask for some sort of recount? I'm positive he's not going to want to leave willfully. What What do you think might end up occurring in some sort of situation that that leads up pretty much with that situation coming to hand? Well, well, the way I see it, either way, there's going to be unrest after the election. Either Biden wins or where if Trump wins. From either, you know, the left or the right, there's going to be some kind of unrest. Yeah. And if Trump, for example, if Trump doesn't want to leave, I have a feeling he might kind of like give like a little nod to the to the radical right. Not like directly, but he might have a feeling he might give like a little nod. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And one interesting thing I saw today too is that even if Biden does end up winning in some sort of case that it comes down to a very close vote. Um, there could be the situation that that Trump uh, not necessarily refuse to go out of office, but he could uh, essentially kind of go that route with trying to make sure votes were counted correctly and things of that nature. But yet at the end of the day, you know, this mail-in voting aspect is one of the ways that we're provided uh, people knew about it since the beginning, and as we've mentioned, these votes still are being counted. And you know, e even with with the lead in some of the states that Trump is losing, ultimately these votes count. So I don't know how much can be done by President Trump in some case that he does wind up losing. We'll have to wait and see, but it's going to be interesting. It's looking better for Biden at the moment. But of course, the election still is not over. We could still potentially see shifts. We could still potentially see shifts, potentially. We'll have to wait and see, but only time will tell. And really, any time in the next few days, maybe even the next few hours, we could see who the winner is. Um, if I may, if I may, uh, you brought up a great, um, you know, a great subject saying, like, you know, they want to recount votes. But I narrowed it down to four states, and for whatever reason, they want to recount votes. Uh, I'm assuming that they're going to re, uh, recount if you know if they decide to do it, they're going to recount four states, and like that's what I'm assuming. They're, I'm assuming that they they, they want to recount Arizona because that's a state that you know Trump was winning, uh, or you know that's the state that as of right now he still wants people to vote, but yeah, he wants like you know. Um, to stop all the other votes counting in Pennsylvania, as Lorenzo brought up earlier, I feel like they that he might want to recount um, Minnesota and Wisconsin and Georgia because you know Georgia, hey, like you know Trump had a big lead right there, and you know as the day went out, um, the day went by today, you know that that lead just pretty much decreased, and now Biden's got really a big shot of like taking over that state. So, but we'll see what happens. And to switch topics from the general election, obviously for any of you Roadrunners, any of you Rio Hondo students, or anybody from California watching this Rio talk, we also have the situation of propositions here in California. Another part of the voting aspect and something that was also on the ballot, of course. Uh, Lorenzo, can you give us a little bit of an update of each of the propositions that are uh, being voted on and the results so far that we have up to this point, what has passed, what hasn't passed, 
what still is in question. Um, just give us a little bit of an update on propositions here in California. Okay, first let me start with Proposition 14, and that's going to be the borrowing for stem cell research using taxpayers' dollars. As of right now, that has not been passed or, or not passed. We still have a, a result for that. And the same goes for Proposition 15, which is going to be the changes in property tax. That has also not been, we don't have results for that yet. Next is Proposition 16, the return of, of affirmative action. Right now we have a law that repealed that and this is a proposition to repeal the repeal, you know? And no, we still do not have affirmative action. So Proposition 16 is a no. Yeah, Proposition 16 is a no. And Proposition 17 is going to allow parolees to vote. And yes, they gained the right to vote this year. Proposition and 16, yes. Proposition 18, that's going to be the right to vote for 17 year olds. But unlike the pro leagues, they did not gain the right to vote this year. And next is gonna be Proposition 19, which adds and subtracts property tax. And we do not have we do not have the results to Prop Proposition 19 yet either. Oh my bad. Proposition 18, we do not have the results for that. My bad. Proposition 20, that's going that's going to add some tougher laws, add more felonies, make it tougher to make parole in general, and that did not get passed. Proposition 21, that's going to be the rent control. It's going to it's going to leave it up to your local government if there's going to be rent control in your neighborhood or not, and that did not get passed. It's going to leave it up to your the landlord. Proposition 22, the next one, special workplace rules for, for the gig economy. That's going to be your rights or drivers, Uber, whatnot. And they still maintain their status as independent contractors. Good news for them. So with that Proposition 22, it was one of the ones that was talking about. That. So there with that Proposition 22 we voted on it as a yes. Yes. And next is going to be Proposition 22 three, which is going to make some changes to dialysis clinics. They'll only be able to be open if there's a doctor present and they won't be able to shut down without state approval. And no, that did not pass. Proposition 24 is going to be new consumer laws, which involves the government selling your information to corporations or what not, you know. And yes, you do have some laws protecting you, giving them the consent to do that or not. And for Proposition 25, that's going to be the abolishment of cash bail. And we still have cash bail, so that's good if you're able to get out. And, you know, with all those propositions in mind, uh, just for any of you guys watching again, of course, here from California, keep an eye out on those propositions, especially the ones that have not had an official result as to, yes, if they're passing or no, if they're not passing. Keep a lookout on that as the next following days go by. Make sure you're informed on how these propositions may affect or may not affect just in case. You never know when it might or when it might not. It's always best to be informed on these matters. And especially if you're from here, obviously from California, because this is where they affect you, obviously. And also with that said, you know, with the general election, with the general presidential election still not being official as of yet, um, as the days go by, that will also be situated. That will also be, uh, we'll keep an eye out for that to see how things go with that and see which president ends up getting to those 270 electoral college votes. But up to now, still nothing official, but... As I mentioned, research, make sure you guys are looking at ways that you can get informed on these subject matters and make sure you guys are doing your research on these results and things of that nature, because this is, of course, a very big election in our country's history, considering everything that's gone on in 2020 and the past few years, it's still, every election is very important, of course, you can never really underestimate an election. Each of them are always very important. And with that said, uh, do you guys have any final thoughts? 
just stay safe out there. Either way, either Biden wins or if Trump wins, we could expect some some sort of um, civil unrest, you could say. To follow up with that, yeah, we'll be safe for everybody. You know, regardless of who wins, there will be some sort of chaos. You know, LA's being prepared with the bill, like billboards covering glass, so be safe for everybody. Yeah, for my part too, make sure y'all are staying safe, of course, and stay informed, do whatever you need to do uh, in regards to this election. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again for joining into this episode of Real Talk. Again, my name is Enrique Medina, joined by John Rodriguez and Lorenzo Arce. Thank you, guys. Hello, Roadrunners. It is Enrique Medina back again with an update from this previous episode. Currently, Saturday morning, November the 7th, 2020, Joe Biden has officially reached and surpassed the 270 electoral college votes and will officially be the next president of the United States. He was at 264 compared to 214 for Donald J. Trump, the Republican nominee. And with Pennsylvania, one of the states we're waiting on, um, they had 20 electoral college votes. They officially projected Joe Biden as the winner of that state especially knowing with the mail-in voting that was still coming in at that point. That was the one thing we were waiting for, mail-in voting. Um, A lot of the Democrats, mostly Democrats, were voting uh, through the mail, and that wound up being the difference in Pennsylvania, gifting, uh, essentially giving Joe Biden the presidency. So with that said, it's currently now at 284 to 214, but that's officially enough for Joe Biden to become the next president of the United States. So we'll keep you guys updated. Make sure to follow El Paisano Media on Instagram. And with that being said, that's it for this update. Keep keep your eyes open for what might happen next in regards to Joe Biden having some sort of announcement Mm -hmm. or Donald Trump having some sort of announcement. Thank you, guys.